Now that you know that diabetes is reversible, even without medication, this afternoon we're going to talk about what are some of the nutritional tips or how much calories should be restricted or what are some of the nutritional patterns that have been approved for weight loss and has been shown to reverse diabetes. So if you like my video, please click like and subscribe and the notification bell so that you will be updated for any new uploads every week. So when we talk about acute caloric restriction, we're talking about restricting the amount of calories that you take in every day. What happens if that occurs? We know that there is what we call as rapidity of metabolic adaptation to the sudden drop in caloric intake. For example, from 1,500 calories, you drop your calories to around 800 calories and this metabolic adaptation has been shown to be really striking. So in type 2 diabetes, such dietary restriction causes a significant major alteration in the hepatic glucose output, meaning the production of glucose by your liver. You know what? It can normalize within seven days of acute caloric restriction, meaning your fasting blood glucose becomes normal within seven days of an acute caloric restriction. Thereby, the major underlying factor that has been shown to improve or increase remission in diabetes is actually the sudden reversal of the hepatic insulin resistance, meaning what used to be the liver not responding to insulin because of acute caloric restriction there is a drop in hepatic fat that results in the liver becoming more sensitive to insulin being produced by the pancreas. Studies have shown that the intrahepatic fat or the fat in the liver can decrease by as much as 30% during the first seven days of an 800 kilocalorie per day diet. And this can lead to low normal levels after eight weeks. So if you look closely at the first figure, that's a diabetic patient with a significant 36% liver fat. And what happens is a significant change in the fat distribution after eight weeks of an 800 kilocalorie per day caloric restriction. So in this individual, it has been shown that there's no other liver pathology identified except that if you can clearly see, the liver fat content was very high. So what happens, this results in the so-called fatty liver in most of our type 2 diabetics. In the whole direct cohort, meaning those patients who were given only 700 calories per day, caloric restriction, where most patients lost weight, this is what happened. After eight weeks, you can clearly see that the liver fat significantly reduced to 2%, suggesting that dietary weight loss restored normality in terms of the amount of fat in the liver. So as you can see, by acute caloric restriction, you reduce the amount of calories per day, you can significantly improve the function of the pancreas because together with acute reduction in fat in the liver is also an acute reduction in intrapancreatic fat. If you can see in this graph, you can clearly see that the pancreatic triglyceride level or the fat level in the pancreas, the pancreas, remember, is the organ that produces insulin. So very gradually, over the remainder of the eight-week low-caloric diet in this particular clinical study, you can clearly see the gradual decline in the intrapancreatic fat, meaning the amount of fat in the liver decreased. 
while the intrapancreatic fat reduced, in step with this, you can see in this graph, the first phase insulin response gradually increase. This is the start of the restoration of your pancreatic beta cell insulin secretion. And this is the start of your diabetes remission. So how do we assess if we are overweight or we are obese or we are morbidly obese? There is what we call as a body mass index. You can actually download the app, any medical app in your iPhone or in your Android phone, and you can calculate your own BMI based on your weight and your height. If your BMI is around 23 for the Asia Pacific region, among Filipinos, it's already categorized as overweight. You become obese class two if your BMI is about 30. There is also what we call as misconception. It does not mean that if you are overweight and obese, that you can readily become a diabetic. Or you cannot say that a patient who is obese all year round will never become non-diabetic. Because actually there's this misconception. The type 2 diabetes is caused by having a BMI over 30. Now remember, many people of our patients continue to have a BMI over 30 despite remission of type 2 diabetes, meaning BMI is not a surrogate marker of remission. It's the amount of weight loss that will predict who will undergo remission. What I'm saying is, once you lost weight, once specifically you lost three BMI units of weight, let's say from a 33 BMI, now you lost weight, you become 30. Well, you're still obese class two. Does that mean that you're not going to have remission of diabetes? No, but you already lost three BMI units of weight. Whatever the baseline BMI, type two diabetes could go into remission. So rejoice. And once you undergo into remission, you remain in remission provided the weight loss is maintained, provided that the weight gain is avoided. As a result, the overspill of fat into ectopic sites, including the pancreas, will not happen. So in fact, we also have case reports to show that even non-obese individuals with type 2 diabetes can achieve remission after significant weight loss. The question about eating patterns, because is this what we want? What will I do? Low carb? I'm going to do low fat? Or what kind of dietary restriction will I have? What we know is that conventional dietetic approaches to achieving weight loss have been unsuccessful in achieving 10 to 15% weight loss required for remission of type 2 diabetes. And what I also don't like is are those people who go into fat diets where they go into prolonged dieting because these fat diets are associated with significant hunger. And the daily decisions about what and how much to eat becomes major drawbacks. So official guidelines at present are therefore now displaced in favor of the so-called more patient or person-centered approach. So if you ask me which diets work best for my patients in terms of remission, I can tell you four. Mediterranean diet, the low-carb diet, the low-fat diet, and of course, the intermittent energy restriction. All of this have been shown to be effective. All of this have been shown to promote weight loss that can lead to remission of diabetes. But this is the caveat when you go into acute caloric restriction. Let's look at the study that restricts calories 
to 700 to 800 calories per day. Remember, there should be an individualized eating advice based upon goal setting, action planning, and identification of potential barriers to success. And very critical is the support group because there has to be monthly reviews. Based on this individualized eating advice, it achieved complete weight stability after an initial acute weight loss phase. Now what happens during the acute weight loss phase is the acute fall in liver content resulting in the normalization of the hepatic insulin resistance and then eventually the stability of the recovered first phase insulin response. This is what I want you to remember. This data both from the counterpoint and the counterbalance study which us which i presented during my first video showed that the profound pathophysiological changes underlying the reversal of type 2 diabetes again do not depend upon the continued hypocaloric state but rather they are durable even during the normal eating as long as no weight regain is present. It is very critical to achieve significant weight loss and to maintain that weight loss during the period. Remember, it is best that once you have lost weight, you want to avoid weight regain. It is very important that individuals should be provided with clear information that yes, if you are going to achieve this goal, the remission of diabetes is possible provided that weight loss was achieved and maintained. And once you have achieved that weight loss and you want to go back to your usual way of eating, you can. In fact, in that study, isocaloric diet was resumed after eight weeks, after I think four months and they were advised to expect to eat only two thirds the amount of the food previously consumed so that they can maintain a steady body weight. There's actually a threshold. Once your body adapts to it, you're used to it. It becomes a lifestyle. So when I ask my patients to go into a certain eating pattern, like intermittent fasting, again, I don't look at it as a fat diet. It is a lifestyle. So once it's part of the lifestyle, you can go on with that same regimen, feeling healthy, maintaining the weight to the point that your blood glucose normalizes over time. So it's very important that there's a gradual transition to an isocaloric diet, meaning you cannot go on for a long time with an acute caloric restriction. You won't survive. So in those patients that I've seen who are eating one hour a day or two hours a day, yes, they lost weight. But now you see them gain weight because it is not sustainable. So this gradual transition back to your usual way of eating over a period of weeks has been associated in our studies with improved weight maintenance at 12 months. But support group is very critical. Weekly face-to-face -face review was undertaken with specification of what and how much to eat. Very important would be individual dietary preferences where followed, but always remember the avoidance of calorie-dense foods. Again, I hope this video helps. I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. Thank you again and see you soon.